Hi, Louis. Can you give me a sound check? Yeah, how are you, Professor? Good, thanks. How are you doing? Thanks. Good, good. You have a new spot for today, huh? Yeah, I've flipped my office around so I can actually sit at a desk. Oh, all right. The, um, the quiz is um, should show up on the Blackboard at 5.30. Can you guys let me know um, when you manage to see it? Uh, I will when I get it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. You're welcome. I got the the quiz, Professor. Okay, great. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you.
Hey guys, you should have uh, turned in your um, grade by now, or the, the submission by now, the quiz results. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna start the lecture at 6.10 just to give everybody a chance to chill for a few minutes. If you need to go take a bio break or something. Uh, professor? Yeah. Um, can you check if you got my quiz? I did, yeah. It's Armand. Armand. Okay, I right, thanks. Yeah. 
got a little late. Yeah, I was having trouble with my drive. I couldn't upload. Yeah, just kidding. Thanks. Okay, guys, we can go ahead and get started now. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so today we're going to start um, sort of shifting gears. So, so far we've been looking at diodes as the first type of semiconductor um material or, or device we've looked at so so far uh, we've looked at diodes and you know the reason we start with diodes is because there's a they're kind of a good way they're the simplest or one of the simplest semiconductor devices we're just talking about you know this is a pretty pretty, pretty simple thing you know a p and an n with you know connections to either side so that's that's the main reason to start with diodes they have you know the, i think their main um uses that you'll run into or you'll see them you know in every microelectronic thing project product you see you'll see lots and lots of diodes but they're mainly in voltage regulators which you almost always have um and then you know you'll have them in like light emitting diodes um you know if you guys are familiar with light emitting diodes you put a voltage in a certain current to them you get a you get a light of a certain color but that's where you kind of see them the most then in rf circuits you might see them in limiters um dot, dot, dot. so that that's diodes so we're gonna have all the information we learned in the diodes we're gonna need or carry forward to our next um, subject which are bipolar transistors so uh, professor did we already sorry go ahead uh, did we finish rectifiers i'm sorry do we finish covering all the full wave rectifiers? Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I had a, I put up a lecture, um, a recorded lecture 
And um, I went through the full wave of rectifiers. And I think I, that's as much as I was going to do. Okay, that's all I need to hear. Thank you. Did, did you did you look at that, or did you were you just wondering if we're going to do even more more than that? Oh yeah, yeah. I was wondering if we would do a lot more because we spent a lot of time on just the uh, um, diodes itself. So I was wondering if we do that. You know, yeah. With, yeah. Right. yeah. No, I, I think the main thing I wanted you guys to take away from the diodes. I mean, the rectifiers are are important, but um, the main things about the diodes is stuff that you'll. I think you'll immediately see the stuff from the diodes will be carrying over the bipolar. But you know, the problem is, you know, honestly, in my mind, this class should really be like two semesters. But um, you know, we do have time limitations, so we need to we need to move on. So yeah. So I don't know, yeah, we're moving on from diodes. Okay, so bipolar transistors are just one type of transistor. There's really, I think I might have mentioned this to you guys um, early on. So um, we have you know, sort of the world of transistors, which, you know, is basically all the electronics we, we typically work with. By the way, guys, I'm using a new microphone. You guys can hear me okay, like the loudness, everything. Anybody has a problem? Any complaints? It sounds really muffled. What's that? Uh, it sounds fine to me, but. Okay, thanks, thanks. Yeah, it sounds fine. Okay. No difference still. No difference? $300 down the drain? No difference, huh? Who is that in the background? Is, sure that, is that the, the PGs or something? Just kidding. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's using your mic audio. I think it's using like what you were using okay. before. Okay. Well, let's let's try this for a while. Anyway, so we have transistors, which are all the components we have, electronic components. So if you were gonna take your you know cell phone, just your your cell phone in hand. So there's two types of transistors. There is the MOS transistor, which we'll see. This is um, metal oxide semiconductor. So this is pretty much all the all digital circuits. Are made out of this type of transistor, and. Um, so what's that? So in your cell phone, it would be like the baseband chip, which now does basically everything. So the baseband chip, um, it does you know all the interfaces to all the different components. Does you know runs your operating system? Operating system, you know, runs the apps. Um, sort of handles the COM protocols, protocol, protocols, like, you know, whatever, just the cellular, cellular communication itself, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. That's all the digital back end of this stuff. Um, just, you know, running, CCP, IP, internet, you know, the work. So it's basically all the digital stuff you'll see, basically all the chips. Like if you're a chip designer, you'll be doing MOS transistors, okay? Then there's the bipolar transistors. And these handle most, or let's just say many, because this is kind of a dynamic situations between MOS. So the MOS also has, you know, some analog circuits. Um, so these will probably be stuff that's, you know, low. Um, so rail, I'd say call it rail to rail. You guys, I have a, let me not get into that because you guys probably don't even, won't even know what I'm talking about for a few more semesters. But there's some analog circuits, but all the analog circuits, all the 
analog circuits integrated into baseband chip. Okay, so the bipolar transistor does many of the analog of analog functions. And those are, you know, any kind of amplifier, like, uh, like let's call it low noise amplifier. Um, power amplifier. Oscillators. This is all the analog things you need to run your cell phone on. Okay, or interface to interface to mic to speakers, that kind of thing. Okay, so this is basically the world of transistors. There's like a very small world out there. I call them, you know, exotic transistors. Again, I think we we talked about this, but you know, these would be like gallium nitride devices, you know, um, gallium arsenide. These are kind of real specialty stuff. But it's, you know, it's very unlikely that you guys are gonna ever, ever see those or work those. I don't even know if there are any classes in Cal Poly that we'll be working on. So this is gonna be the next area we're gonna cover. And it's always a struggle because again, we have limited time to figure out what emphasis to put on this versus this. Because we, we, we really don't have um, enough time to cover both in depth. And so it's, it's always a struggle for me to figure out how to, how to set it up, you know, the remainder of the class. Um, so um, for, most of you, if you're not doing chip design, if you're doing you know system level design, board level design, those kind of things, which will probably be most of you doing work in microelectronics, it's more important to learn more about bipolar transistors. If you end up going into chip design, you're almost exclusively going to see MOS transistors. Okay, so. In, you know, I have worked almost exclusively in chip design um, since I got a school and, you know, what, tw maybe 20 years of design. I've been out of school for about 25 years out of grad school. So out of that 25 years, well, and I wish I'd done 20 years of design, but let's just for the sake of discussion, let's say 20 years of design and five years of uh, um, screwing around with management only. But of that 20 years in design, I would guess I've done 19 years in MOS and maybe a year in bipolar. That's just how, that's what happens if you're, you know, a chip designer. But, you know, again, most other people will never be designing with MOS, they'll just be working on bipolar. But anyway, we're going to start with bipolar and we'll see how far we know we'll you'll only get to it to a certain depth. And then at some point, we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to decide, you know, we're running out of time and to shift over to MOS transistors and we'll see where that is. Okay, so now let's just talk about bipolar transistors and amplifiers, et cetera, and where we, where we go with those. So like I mentioned, I think bipolar, so uh, just by this nature, Um, MOS transistors, for the most part, most MOS transistors out there are switching circuits. In the sense that they're like logic uh, devices. They're, yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar too much with logic devices, but these are things that you abstract as zeros and ones, if you're a computer engineer, you know, you can go to that level of abstraction. So you think of them as that way. And then bipolar transistors, so these functions that I mentioned, bipolar transistor, 
a, a huge part of those things are amplifiers. And that's that's really the most of the stuff we're going to be covering with bipolar transistors. There, there are a lot of other things you can do, but amplifiers are like a huge application. So if you, again, if you just look at you know all the places in your cell phone where you know you might have amplifiers. So let's just do a real simple block block diagram of the sort of the analog part of your cell phone. And this is an example that the book uses. I think it's a pretty decent example. So if you if you think about just the audio part of your cell phone, you would have you know your microphone which is giving a very small signal out. So almost immediately, what you'd like to do is to amplify the signal. Basically, the reason you wanna amplify a small signal is because there are a lot of noise sources in your system that tend to that they're just going to inject themselves in every one of these steps that I'll draw. There are, you know, noise sources that are just going to show up. There, you know, it's if you actually the reason it's called noise is because if you know in the back in the audio days, if you actually had enough of them, you could hear it as this kind of a hissing sound in the background. You can kind of still hear it, I guess, if you're, um, you know, if you crank up um, your audio really loud or if you're a, you know, audiophile, you're, you're listening carefully. So what you want to do is get your signal over that noise. The larger the amplitude of that signal is, if your noise is so-called additive, you'll feel it less. You know, if you're, if you've got a, one millivolt noise getting added to a 100 millivolt signal, it's you know 101, 100 to one signal to noise ratio. If it's getting added to a 10 millivolt signal, it's only a 10 to one signal to noise ratio. So you'd rather a lot rather be have a large signal. So first thing you do is you amplify the signal. Then you would typically tend to want to um, up convert that thing. So it's, you know, an audio signal might be in the 10 to, uh, I don't know, 10 to 20 kilohertz. I really don't know. At most 100 kilohertz. Um, but, you know, in a cell phone, you want to basically transmit stuff at, you know, a gigahertz or more signal. So you, you, need a, you need a mixer here. You'd have to have a, so that's a mixer. So you'd have to have an oscillator. That's chugging along at one to two gigahertz. That needs amplifiers in the os an oscillator. Um, then you're gonna need a you're gonna drive an antenna, and then you need a pretty powerful signal going to your antenna. So you need a power amplifier. So these are again, these are typical parts of your of your transmission of your cell phone. So you need you need amplifiers for your mic itself or for your camera, you name it. Any of those interfaces for your accelerometers, for your touch center sensors, everything needs to get amplified. So all your uh, peripherals need amplifiers. Then you need amplifiers in your oscillator, you need amplifiers in your mixer to upconvert that signal. And then finally, you need an amplifier, your power amplifier to drive your antenna because you know might the signal might have to travel for several kilometers to get to your base station. Okay, and then from the base station to your receiver, if I was going to sort of draw your receiver part of your circuit, you have an antenna to, to receive your signal. You need a low noise amplifier. So again, you have a very small signal here, or can have a very small signal if you're far away from the base station. 
Now you have a low noise amplifier to crank it up over the noise. Then you need to down convert it. Again, mix it with the oscillator. Oh, boy, I'm okay. And then um, you probably need a, a analog to digital converter. And then, you know, goes into the baseband. So this is like a really like very oversimplified version of your path of your signal path. But here's you know more amplifiers, 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 amplifiers. So basically, you know, in a, a cell phone, which is you know example the book uses, I think it's a good one because we all pretty much all own cell phones. You have a ton of amplifiers in your path, and in fact, it's the majority of your analog components are amplifiers. So you know you don't need to know. This is just for your background info about why we're talking about amplifiers and why we're going to focus on them because that's just something you you need all the time in microelectronics. But I just kind of give you guys some examples of where you typically see amplifiers. Okay, so so how do you get? So this is just to give you guys an idea. So you need an amplifier, and what does an amplifier do? <clears throat> so this is the symbol for an amplifier. You usually have an A or you put a, a A times or times A or whatever in there. And you get a simple signal in. And most amplifiers are voltage amplifiers. So most amps or voltage amps. And that's pretty much what we're going to look in, which means there's, you know, the input is voltage and the output is voltage. Okay. But there are other, there's every other kind of amp. There's, you know, input current, output current. There's input current. Output voltage, there's input voltage, output current. Anyway, there's all these types of apps, but we're only going to look at input voltage, output voltage, and that's really the most typical one. So, okay, so we have V in, we get V out, and basically we want this thing to do V out is equal to A times V in. So let's say A, for so example, A is, I don't know, 10. So, you know, Vn, the Vn is, you know, a 10 millivolt signal. Let me draw it. So this is time. Is voltage. Let's say Vn doesn't have any AC components, so Vn is something like that. And then say it's 10 millivolts. So I'm not going to do a very good drawing with this. So let's just for a sake of making it easier on my drawing to make A just equal to 5x. Okay. So then the, so this is would be Vn, okay, will be a sinusoid, let's say at, at 10 millivolt input. V out is going to look like a sinusoid with so that's going to be, you know, 50 millivolts. Uh, this is the app. Okay, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. That's what you'd like the amplifier to do. You'd, you know, I'd like it to amplify an input signal into an output signal. Um, in an ideal case, you would like anything to be able to drive this input. 
meaning that even if you had a, you know, if you had a voltage source and it had a high output impedance, it still wanted not to matter. It'd like this amplifier to still work fine. And if you had a load that this thing is driving, you'd like it to be able to drive any load. And as we'll see, that's not so easy. And in fact, uh, it does the design of your amplifier it matters what what type of circuit is driving it or what the how the output impedance of the circuit is driving it and what type of load impedance it can drive. Okay. For example, here in this power amplifier, you're driving an antenna which has a very low impedance. It's just the nature of antennas. So this thing needs to be a very, very powerful amplifier. Okay. And so you'll, that was just an example. So same, same thing here, we've got a low impedance here. We probably have a high impedance here and so on. So anyway, those, all those things matter. But in a nutshell, that's what we'd like the amplifier to do. So this is at the block diagram level, but this is a, a circuits class. So we got to figure out like what kind of circuit we can use to, to create this from all the options we have. You know, we have, we have resistors, we have capacitors, now we have diodes, we have current sources, we have voltage sources. Okay, so we got to figure out like what are the options for creating an amplifier. And so this is, um, how we make an amplifier at a, at a very simple level from a transistor. And I'll talk about, and, and I'll show you how this can be, if, if, if you have such a device, how you can use it as an amplifier, okay? What this device is, is a, this is a voltage controlled, Current source. Okay, so if you had a current, if you just had a current source, okay, so just do time here maybe, and I would have the current I out from the current source or I1. Basically, a current source just outputs a current. Okay, it doesn't matter what voltage you put across it, nothing, it just, it just bounces out a current, whatever that is. So I, so we call this I1, okay. Now a voltage controlled current source outputs a current dependent on the voltage that's controlling it. So here you have V1, that's actually controlling the current to I1 through this multiplication factor K1. So let's say if um, this is the I out, the voltage control current source, and this is time. And let's say this was V1, respect to time. And let's say V1 does something like this with time, okay? And so the current source, would do, I1 would do something like that at a time. So it wouldn't be constant. It would, this all would be K times whatever V1 is at this time. So it would basically, you can modulate this current or increase or decrease this current of this current source given changing this input. Okay. Now, if you put, so basically the equation for this current source, so I1 is basically this. Okay. So I1 is equal to KV1. And if we put a resistor at the output of this current source, so, you know, in our, in our discussion, so this as you'll see in probably in the next lecture, 
this device looks is you know a way to model the bipolar transistor or a simplified way to model a bipolar transistor which is a voltage controlled current source if you put an external resistor across that okay you can get a voltage gain and so let's look at it so if we have so v out okay is the only current going through if you look at v out is this current going through this resistor okay of course it's going in this direction so the current will have like a negative the v out will have a negative value compared to this thing but basically v out is equal to i1 times or minus i1 because it's going in this direction times r sub l okay we already said i1 was k v1 times r sub l okay so basically you get v1 times k r sub l and um, we put a voltage source vn across v1 so v v1 is equal to vn so the out ends up being um, minus minus vn times k r l or v out over vn is minus k r so okay and this is our definition of gain which is v out over vn and it's basically the transfer function of this current source k times our load resistor okay so if we take if we had such a device which as we'll see the bipolar transistor can act like this device and put a resistor across the output we can get this gain which will be a function of the current source times the resistance across it now one thing about this that's a little well there's a bunch of stuff that might be confusing but one thing that definitely i think we're going to just like see just people who, who've been working with amps they see this enough and they just kind of ignore it is notice that this is an inverting amplifier meaning that the gain is negative that means if i draw this is a non-inverting app what i just drew so this is a non-inverting app which means that the output has the same polarity the output has the same polarity as the input okay so a is a a is a positive number here okay so output same polarity as the input if you have an inverting amp the output is going to have an inverted polarity compared to the input so this is the input notice is the input's going high the output's going low multiplied by this gain and and so on and so forth so it's always the output is inverted in polarity compared to the input and you know we basically for the rest of the circuits the way they use amplifiers they don't care if that happens in fact a lot of times it's better for feedback circuits etc to have an inverting uh, polarity but anyway we don't we're basically all the amps we'll see and i think all the amps that i'm familiar with are always inverting but it's still amplifying the signal it's just inverting the polarity it's not attenuating the signal it's still amplifying the signal but just flipping the polarity and we don't basically we just kind of know that we use that but we don't necessarily like think about it very often the fact that it's inverted so if you ask me what if i you know looked at this and said you know what's the gain of this app I might tell you it's KRL or I might tell you it's minus KRL, but I still I think of this gain of this amp as being KRL, which is how I think about it. Okay. Um,
Uh, let's see. Let, let's let's stop here, guys. I, I think I want to stop here, and then we'll start by looking at what the bipolar um, bipolar transistor looks like um, in the next class. Because I, I think this is gonna it's gonna be hard to stop once we start going looking at the exponential voltage dependent current source. Um, any questions? Okay, guys, if not, uh, have a good Wednesday, I guess, and I'll see you guys on Thursday. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank, Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye.